May we have the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. May we all greet one another. May we have the walk of faith with action. With that, the title for today is Four Friends Who Made the Winning Move. The expression winning move in today's title originally refers to a move in the games of Go or Chess that decisively influences the outcome of the match. However, this term is not limited to just go or chess. It is widely used in politics, economics, sports, and other fields. These days, all the attention on the political scene is focused on next year's general election. Whether it's the ruling party, the opposition, or a new party, during a strategic move to overturn an unfavorable situation is a matter of intense interest. In the corporate world, there comes a movement when a winning move must be made to improve the financial performance significantly. In sports, changing an adverse situation with a strategic move is crucial. A coach who can make such a move is hailed as a master. Making the winning move in our spiritual life is also crucial. Revelation 3, 15 to 16 contains a message that rebukes the Laodicean church. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. This message warns of the lukewarm faith of the church members and emphasizes the importance of not living a life influenced solely by the visible environment. It encourages boldly stepping out from an ambiguous stance and living and initiating spiritual life. In other words, drawing decisive spiritual movements and moves is important in life. There are some people who we don't know if they go to church or if they believe in Jesus or not, if they have a church duty or not, if they are receiving grace or not. We must not live such a walk of faith. You must do your walk of faith surely where people will be able to say oh that person only knows about church that person is solely a christian amen starting from your family oh this person really goes all in for the church duty that he has been given praying 24 hours and longing onto god the family knows better if your family knows it, then will the Holy Spirit not know it? Does Satan not know of this? Now it's the end of the year, in the year 2023, fellow believers may be able to live the life of making the winning move. Currently, those who have taken on the responsibility of a steward for the 2024 ministry are having the oneness time. It's good. However, it is crucial that the purpose of this oneness time is clear. Each department should have a clear purpose for making spiritual moves towards the church's ministry. What's important is why do you have to have oneness? It's so that you'd be able to have the direction of each ministry in the church of making the spiritual winning move. It's a challenge for the oneness. As we move forward in their ministry, various challenges may arise. At this time, may you be able to hold on to the pulpit and write the stream of the pulpit. 
There needs to be a determination to make the signs of spiritual moves in line with the flow of the pulpit. In today's main passage, four friends of a paralyzed man appear. Hearing about Jesus healing various illnesses and performing miracles, they bring their severely paralyzed friend to Jesus. However, they weren't the only ones who had heard of this. Thus, they faced a crowd where Jesus was, making it impossible to get close by. Despite the obstacles, they didn't give up. Instead, they made a winning move. They knew that they had to go to Jesus, stand in front of Jesus, but they could not because there were so many people. But if they gave up saying, oh, there are so many people, we cannot do so, let's go back. It's not that they gave up upon their environment, but these four friends made the winning move. Eventually, Jesus sees their faith and heals their paralyzed friend. The four friends became one team and became a unity, leading their paralyzed man to the place of healing. And it can be applied to our ministry of the three member team. It also becomes a significant biblical model for the new flesh and blood evangelism ministry. You must all challenge yourselves to lead others towards Jesus Christ, the ultimate solution to all of our life's problems. Through this passage, I bless all members of Yohan Church in the name of the Lord that you may become witnesses who do not give up in the midst of any tribulations and environment and make the winning move like the four friends and bully stand as the witnesses who possesses all the nations. Number one, the winning move of faith, verses one to two. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in various synagogues and casting out demons before returning to Capernaum. This rumor spread among people, and many people gathered around the house where Jesus was staying to point where there was not an inch to step a foot on. This rumor spread among the people, and many people gathered around the house where Jesus was staying to the point where there was not an inch to step foot on, and these people were gathered to experience or witness the various works of healing and miracles performed by Jesus. However, we can see that Jesus turned their attention and preached the way of God. Here, way is logos in Hebrews. This, signifi this signifies the word of God. What Jesus wanted to convey to them was to show them that no matter how many miracles they see or how many healings they experience, it is of no use if they do not understand the word of God, that is, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Rather than looking on at things that they will disappear after a brief period of time on earth, the eyes of faith must be open to look at the eternal things. Why do you receive scars? Why do you fall into trials? Why do you give up? 
it's all because of the introductory things, the introductory life. The life of the main content does not have ups and downs. It does not give up. They know if it is life or death. There are pastors who live the introductory life, and there are people who even have good faith. We know if that person has the introductory life or the main content-driven life. What is the main content? Christ. Are you resolute in this? Are you concluded in this or not? Today, it is very cold. Out of all the winter days, today is the coldest day. And there are people who say, oh, I think I'm going to give worship online. The people who know the taste of worship. The importance of worship. Then what happens? What if turmoils or hardships come to your lives? Turmoils come in your lives all the time. But what will you do? Let's say that it's a little uncomfortable. But the greatest glory, the place of blessings, are you going to give it up? What will happen to those people? How can God bless them? Fellow believers, maybe the worship of blessing the place of worship. May you be able to look at the eternal things with faith. This becomes the beginning of true faith. Verses 3 to 4. As Jesus continued to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom, a group of individuals appeared. There was a man suffering from a case of paralysis, so much so that he could not move at all. Four friends decided to carry him to Jesus for healing. But the problem was that there were so many people around that they couldn't get to the front where Jesus was. But they didn't stop there. They had faith that if they could just get the paralyzed man before Jesus, his problem would be completely resolved, and they made the winning move of faith. They had that sure faith. Hearing this rumor, that was the reason that they removed the roof of the house where Jesus was and lowered the paralyzed man down before him. While it might seem unconventional to us today, it's important to understand that roofs in Israel during the time were constructed differently. Long time ago, if they were to move the roof, it was possible. Right now, we cover it with cement, but back then it was not so. It was with mud. They make it like that, and on top of the roof, They do ceremonies like the Passovers, and there were steps to go on top of the roof. So it was not difficult to remove the roof at the time. At that time, the roof was first laid horizontally with beams made of solid branches, and then reeds or palms were laid vertically, finally was covered with a laid layer of mud for insulation. In other words, it was a roof with a light layer of mud that could be scraped away to create an opening through 
which the paralyzed man could be lowered. Most houses had exterior stairs that made it easy to get up on top of the roof. In the face of obstacles, they did not turn back, but instead made a winning move of faith. In verse 5 of today's passage, we can observe Jesus acknowledging the faith of the friends of the paralyzed man who acted in such a way. Jesus did not care if there was dust falling from the roof. The phrase, when Jesus saw their faith, indicates that their actions were not vague or aimless, but demonstrated a profound faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus only saw faith because he saw the main content life. There are people who make mistakes, but you must see the faith. That's the main content-driven life. It's not saying, oh, that person is like this or that. Who does not make mistakes? If it is caught, it is a sin. But if it's not, it's not. There are people who are deceived in such a way, and they cannot receive grace, not being able to succeed in worship. It's not important that there was dust or mud falling from the ceiling. But Jesus saw the faith that they believed that their friend would be healed. Their actions were underpinned by a complete faith in Jesus. The walk of faith is for you to continuously grow, but Satan hates that. So it's that Satan continues to distract this. It's the complete faith towards Jesus Christ that Jesus saw. Hebrews 11, 6 emphasizes, But without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them. Diligently seek him. Answers are bound to come to a life that makes a winning move of faith. There would be no answer if one is bound by the visible present reality. Just believe. God loves me the most. God listens to my prayers and He blesses me. Amen. You must have the heart of the spiritual main figure. Oh, I don't have faith. I'm not interested. You must not have the thoughts of spiritual inferiority because that's all disbelief because God looks at your heart. May you be able to make the winning move of faith and then you'll have answers. Those who are bounded by the reality, the things that they see in front of their eyes, if you live like that, there are no answers. You cannot experience the Almighty God. You'll be lukewarm. The faith that is not this or that. People think that is the walk of faith. Next year's message for the overall direction is the eternity of the answer of the first, second, and third RETC. This embodies the covenantal challenge of raising the eternal partisan. I have already made our church's New Year's sermon. I've already written the message given by God in calligraphy. This will be made public at the New Year's service. Be excited. It's coming soon. It's a true story. What is realistic? In 2024, God will lead you to a path of realistic answers. The important thing is to hold on to the covenant and take a challenge of faith. It's the action moving. The life of those who have made the winning move of faith compared to those who have not is the complete opposite. 
Since I made my winning move of faith, I've been able to testify God's word and be used by God for the evangelization of the Two Days of Nations and 5,000 people groups. If there are any regrets lingering in your hearts from the year 2023, I suggest you to go all in and concentrate in the year 2024. Make the winning move of faith. May you make your winning move of faith where if God touches your heart, make that resolution. Amen. Don't question if this is the voice of God, the realization of God, or if it is my thoughts or my feeling. You don't have to think about that as you pray, as you give worship. All the thoughts that God gives you, it is by the Holy Spirit. So I bless you in the name of the Lord to realistically experience how God works and take a great leap of faith forward as witnesses of the fulfillment of the covenant. Number two, the source of healing, verse five. Jesus cures the paralytic's illness after seeing the four friends' faith. However, what stands out is that Jesus did not say, your illness is cured to the paralyzed man. Instead, he said, your sins are forgiven. This statement suggests that Jesus placed greater emphasis on the fundamental healing. This message highlights that there is a fundamental problem that needs to be addressed before curing any physical illness. That is the problem of sin. However, we must approach the assumption that all illnesses are unconditionally caused by sin with caution. It is true that all problems related to mankind's birth, age, sickness, and death originated from Adam's sin, the first man, so it is the problem of sin. However, it is not wise to tell people who are suffering from illnesses to repent of their sins. In fact, some illnesses may have come from one's poor management of health. Some may have been caused by aging, or some may have come from deeds of evil spirits. We must not speak frankly. The matter of life and death, yes, it comes from Adam that we have illnesses. But there are various factors that can lead to illnesses. We must be wise. Additionally, as mentioned in John 9.3, an illness might occur to reveal the work of God. So there are many reasons that we have illnesses. However, one thing that we must remember is that people, whether they are suffering from physical illness, disability, or keeping a healthy physical condition are still under the influence of Genesis 3 without exception. All is by the governing of God. All people, whether they are healthy or not, are under the influence of Genesis chapter 3, and this is something that we must remember. Therefore, overcoming the problem of sin should be the top priority of everyone's life. Since humans who have sin cannot solve their sins of their own, God himself provided a way, and that way is Jesus Christ. The name Jesus means he who saves his people from their sins. 
Jesus came as the Christ who bore the burden of the cross of atonement. Through his resurrection, all of life's fundamental problems were completely and perfectly solved. Anyone who believes in this truth is completely freed from the power of sin and death, even if it, there is a murderer, a prostitute, whoever it may be. They are free from sin and curses. It's that. That is the gospel. Verses 6 to 7. Among those who came to see Jesus were teachers of the law. Those who prided themselves on being well versed in the law were shocked to see Jesus suddenly forgiving sins. They were shocked. They questioned how a human could offer forgiveness of sins something only God Himself can do. It was a situation where they should have immediately stoned Jesus to death for blasphemy, but they were unable to express themselves externally and were immersed in these thoughts because there were just so many people. At this time, Jesus sees through their hearts and asks them a question. Jesus knows our thoughts and questions in verses 8 to 9. To the teachers of the law, Forgiving sins and healing the paralyzed man were both impossible deeds. He questions, what's easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk? Forgiving sins and healing, there are two things. These scribes were unable to do both things. Since the forgiveness of sins is something invisible and not immediately evident, unlike healing a disease which would be visible, they considered healing an illness to be more difficult. Knowing that, knowing what the teachers thought, Jesus even healed the paralyzed man's sickness with the word of the word. and the paralyzed man was made clean. The scribes were so surprised because it was unimaginable. Verses 10 to 12. <laughs> And we have seen that Jesus healed the paralytic to reveal that he has the authority to forgive sins. May you clearly remember that the purpose of healing diseases was not merely to heal diseases, but to heal lives fundamentally. If you have sinned, you cannot go to heaven. God is almighty. So, if you have to go to heaven, then you must solve your sins. It's by believing in Jesus Christ that you are healed. We are not sinners. We are righteous. Amen. You must know of your identity. 
If you don't know of this, your faith cannot grow. I'm not saying to be prideful. But you must make it so that your faith will grow. If you believe in Jesus, your sin will be forgiven. Only the blood of Jesus can make me clean. It's not simply for healing of your illnesses. We need to open our spiritual eyes to see the fact that their souls in the field are in a state of spiritual paralyzation. They cannot come on their own. Someone needs to bring them. So what do we have to do? Like the four friends, we have to bring them. We have to hold our hands and bring them. That is why we are doing the three team of three movement and forming the flesh and blood evangelism team. There is a saying, death is not a tragedy. A tragedy is to allow one to die while still alive. This is a message that we must not miss as we live our walk of faith. We must recognize the spiritual urgency. It's not that you leave your parents to spiritually die. We don't know when they will die. But you leave them alone, that's the worst thing that you can do as a child. There's a golden time for soul salvation. The golden time. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. What comes, comes in order, but what goes doesn't always follow. It's not that you don't die if you are young. You don't know. What comes does not go in order. I bless you in the name of the Lord that all of you may become absolute disciples of Christ like the four friends who brought their paralyzed friend to Jesus demonstrate a winning move of faith and effectively actualize the team of three and the three movement of the flesh and blood evangelization. This is the conclusion. Pastor Leonard Sweet, a world-renowned Christian futurologist and professor of evangelism made this diagnosis after looking at the state of the churches around the world. Today's churches are filled with people who want to be moved, but are not willing to be moved. This is a fact. The church has no spiritual influence because the believers who need to move do not move. This is important. It is important to be moved, inspired. However, what is the reason for that? What is the result of the grace that you received? It is to move. That's why you receive grace. That's why you receive training. You must not lose sight of the reasons why one needs to be moved. The purpose of being moved is to move. I will saw believers of you in church in the name of the Lord that you may become and have oneness through the team of three like the four friends of the paralytic and live a life that makes a winning move and making a covenantal challenge of the CVDIP and sends it as the witnesses who possesses all the nations. Dear Father God, may we be the four friends who makes the winning move of the spiritual action. May we be able to do evangelism of the flesh and blood. And upon all those who are determined to sol receive salvation, may we be able to give them salvation by Christ. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.